Okay, so uh, the roadmap has been put out for 2011 for Unity, and uh, I haven't really gone over it a whole lot. I've just basically read the headings. Uh, it's pretty long, so let's go ahead and take a look, uh, see what everyone thinks about it. All right, so um, Unity 3.4 is nearing release, uh, and we wanted to share some of the features that will be included, and also share with you the roadmap for what we are looking, working on for this year. So Unity 3.4. Uh, so they're entering release candidate one, and I don't believe usually they don't have a whole lot of release candidates. Usually they get it right, you know, pretty close on the first time. Uh, so let's go over some of these features. Uh, Allegro what? Allegro rhythmic substance integration. Uh, procedural textures are built directly into Unity. Uh, substance procedural textures can be tweaked in Unity. Uh, you can even update the textures at runtime. It can be used for anything from aging effects on textures to uh, customizing characters. Uh, I'm not really exactly sure what that is. I understand it can be used for, like, does anyone know exactly what that is? I'm not really, I assume it's modifying a texture. I'm not exactly sure how. Uh, it'll be something interesting to look up anyway. Uh, so they have shadow improvements. Directional Light's got a new shadow uh, projection mode called Stable Fit. Uh, now there's no more shadow boundaries shimmering and rotating the camera. Uh, that's good. Uh, regarding optimizations, uh, we call shadow casters much better now, uh, which means fewer draw calls. Shadow calling can also uh, use occlusion calling data. Uh, skin performance and multi-core. So skinning performance is two to three times faster on PCs uh, due to SSC2 optimizations and multi-core improvements. Uh, there's also multi-threading skinning for the latest iOS and Android devices. I'm really happy to hear that uh, since I do most of the stuff on uh, mobile platforms. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see that. Uh, does anyone have any questions or anything about any of this? Download downloadable content with caching for complete scenes and asset bundles. Uh, this is a cross-platform feature including iOS and Android that's perfect for downloading content. Asset bundles uh, and even complete scenes can be downloaded on demand and cached locally. Uh, the caching API gives you full control, control over uh, when to download a new version of the asset using uh, using the caching API dramatically reduces memory usage and has a huge impact on load times. Uh, I'll be inter one of the things I've since I have been playing around with asset bundles, I noticed that they actually do use a lot of memory. Uh, I had a few uh, sample projects that I was playing around with, and when I was trying to load it up on my iPhone, it kept crashing. I couldn't figure out why because it worked perfectly on on a, like the desktop, and it turned out uh, it was just using a lot of memory. So I'll be interested to see that. Now they're talking about caching it locally. Um, one of the things on a web player build is you, you really can't, you have nowhere to, really, to store this uh, data that you're, that you're streaming to the user. Now I wonder if this is going to kind of give some sort of option to be able to, to store those files. It'll definitely be interesting to see. Okay, so you know it is for storage and manage? So I'm not I'm not like I'm not sure if you're going to be able to uh, keep that date cache data to the next time uh, they come back and you know say come to your website again and go to play your game if if that's not going to be there already or if you're going to have to download it again like it'd be great if it just kept it there and you know when they reconnected you could check to see if there was a newer version if so just grab the newer version stuff. I have a funny feeling it's not that far advanced yet, but uh, we'll, we'll wait and see. It should be out shortly. Oh, it will stay there? Uh, I'm not seeing that it stays there, that it's going to be persistent from session to session. At least not in this little blurb that they have here. Uh, if it is, great. I've been waiting for that for a long time. 
Uh, if not, uh, we'll see how good it is anyway. Well, it's cash, but I'm not sure if the cash is going to be cleared uh, when the session ends or not. I guess we'll just have to wait and see how they how they actually go ahead and implement it. Now, here's something I probably would have been excited about, you know, two years ago when I first started in Unity, but it's something I've learned to work around. And well, anyway, it's a, a script execution order. Unity now gives you explicit control over the execution order of your scripts. Awake, unenable, and update calls are. Uh, sorted by execution order. Execution order can be defined on a per script basis uh, in an easy to understand dialogue. Okay, I think I actually misunderstood it the first time. Awake, unenable, and updates are sorted by execution order. Okay, so the first time I read this, I had the idea that you could um, say certain scripts would run before others. Uh, but reading it again, it sounds like you can actually change the order of awake, unenable, and update. So you can have your update run before you're awake. Hmm. I don't really see a benefit to that personally. I, I, is it, I just might be because I'm used to going awake on enable update. Like, I'm sure there are some benefits, but I think I've just gotten used to the way it currently works. Unless I'm misunderstanding that. Uh, if so, just give a shout out in the uh, chat room. Uh, so animation and skinned meshes bound volumes, uh, pre-computer bounding volumes for skinned meshes and animations that you have more animated characters on your scene. Uh, well, more animated characters in the scene is always good, right? Graphic optimizations. We imp implemented various graphic optimizations ranging from faster deferred lighting uh, due to more compact lighting, light and shapes and better occlusion calling and a faster open GLES2 and more mobile optimized shaders. Last but not least, Train works on iOS and Android now. Yeah, that's that's huge. Uh, I was talking about that a few weeks ago uh, when I first found out about it. That uh, they, they were they had it done. And they were hoping to slip into 3.4. Yeah, as soon as I heard that, I just like okay. I mean, I've just spent two months working on my own. Uh, I'll probably belong with that. I've probably spent pretty close to, I think I started probably around end of February, creating my own train engine that will work on a mobile device. And after hearing this, it's just like, wow. You know, like I just completely stopped. Yeah. Well, even, even if you're not a mobile developer, picture you do make some game. It's just some little game you just want to make to have fun. Show it to your friends. You get some good positive feedback, so you know that fuels you along to keep improving it, and you just keep making it a little bit better, a little bit better. You know, all of a sudden it becomes viral, or just takes off, or you just become passionate about it. For some reason, you just want to start putting it on other devices, knowing that you can just take this and jam it on a mobile device without really having to worry about oh, I got to redo the whole train and like all these other optimizations that they're adding in. Uh, later on down the list, they talk about. Uh, improve GUI. Uh, we'll get to that when we get there, but uh, just knowing that you can just take it from one and just not really have to worry about it and just stick it on another device or at least another platform is huge. It's one of the things I really like about Unity. Uh, but anyway, let's move on to image effects and water. Uh, there's a big upgrade to image effects and water. Uh, both have been optimized for performance and at the same time visual quality has been improved. There's also uh, easier to tweak for artists. Uh, they're also easier to tweak for artists. Okay, well we just had new water a little while ago. I'll be interested to see what's, what's changed. I assume they're just going to have everything in the inspector. Uh, a big upgrade to image effects and water. So I wonder if they're actually adding more or if they're just tweaking the ones they already have. Or both. Okay, so Unity Xbox 360 and PS3 releases in parallel. All console versions are now released at the same time as 3.4, uh, and projects can easily be moved between all platforms. Uh, Bouchard, our first PS3 game, has just gone through the Sony submission process. Uh, anyone going to pick it up? Anyone have a P PS3 that's going to pick it up just to check it out? I might, just because it's uh, going to be made with Unity. 
But as far as Unity Xbox 360 and the PS3 release in parallel, I don't have a license for either one, so it doesn't impact me. I wasn't aware that they weren't released in parallel. Uh, so for me, for this little blurb, I think the big takeaway for me is Roshar. And I'm just going to click the link just to go see what it looks like. Uh, brings us to the YouTube video, and I can't really show the YouTube video uh, recording of it. So go ahead and take a look at it in your own time. <laughs> I'll check it out. So next, next up is Better Gizmo and Handle Control. I probably should have made this a little bigger font. But anyway, it's a little hard for me to read. Uh, you no longer need to code to add icons to your game objects. Well, that's pretty good. The code itself wasn't actually that big to add a gizmo, but it's nice that you don't have to do it anymore. Uh, now you can simply set the icon in the game object inspector to quickly see and select things on your scene view. That's awesome. So you just probably have to go out and make a bunch of icons for them. Uh, if you want to see an icon for tools like pathfinding nodes, uh, just set the icon on the node script. Okay, so there is a node script in your project and they'll show up in the scene. I'm not sure what a node script is. Uh, I wonder if that's just your pathfinding node, if you got to set an icon there. I guess we'll see when the new version comes out. Uh, you can also toggle the display of handles on a per component basis, so now there's uh, no need to hold back when writing custom editors. I'm not quite sure what that means. Uh, Okay, that's part of the handle control. Okay. Uh, I don't use a whole lot of gizmos, but I can see how it would be useful. Uh, fast collider tweaking. If you select a collider and hold down shift, small dots from small dots for resizing the collider will appear. Uh, this makes it really quick to set up efficient collision levels, uh, so they run really fast on mobile devices. Uh, I guess that's cool. I've never really had a problem with it yet. Oh, so we have a bit of chat I missed. Uh, my problem with Gizmo is that they don't interact with the train like uh, cube meshes. Uh, no, they don't. I'm, I'm not really sure what you mean. Like, they don't have colliders? Is that what you're talking about? Because the Gizmos themselves aren't actually part of your game. They're just kind of, uh, when you're in the editor, kind of graphical representations of things, like when you have a light. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah. Uh, that, would be, that might be something you want to submit to Unity. <laughs> yeah, I see what you mean, though. Like when something's behind something else, you can't really tell unless you rotate the, the camera around. Uh, I'm not sure what you meant, Hans. Keep track of things. I guess for the, the gizmos you were talking about. Uh, so next we have hundreds of minor improvements and fixes. Yeah, that's what I thought you were talking about. So Unity 3.4 also has uh, loads of small improvements, shine ups and fixes. Uh, so anyone have any idea? So this was released June 16th. What does everyone think it's going to be released? Maybe a week from the post date? That would be what, the 23rd? Uh, we're on the 18th right now, maybe less. Five days? It's probably going to be a beginning of the week that they release it on. Uh, so let's go ahead and actually open up my calendar. You probably can't see the calendar. I'll zoom in a bit. So here's the 18th. Uh, they did it on the 16th. So I'd say the 20th at the earliest. Maybe 27th at the latest. I picture it's going to be a Monday or Tuesday release. But I have absolutely no idea. I'm just guessing. It would be, you think, the 1st of July? Well, hopefully not, since Unity 3.5, they have scheduled for uh, the late summer fall release. 